The views and opinions expressed in this content are that of a continuously evolving nature and are subject to change as humanity evolves into higher states of awareness. Hello everyone, this is Lee from Real Spirit Dynamics and I want to go into my experiences with the Ouija board, okay? Because I did the Ouija board for around about five years, a lot, okay, for five years solid. And uh, the way I got into it was I used to have a ghost hunting group called Team Afterlife. And we used to travel across the UK going to haunted locations looking for ghosts, okay? A little bit like these kind of reality TV shows you see, uh, ghost hunters, this and that. And what I can tell you is these shows are not real, okay? There is no such thing as ghosts. Because we did this for two years in the most haunted places and we didn't once see a ghost, okay? So my experience is there is no ghosts. I know that might not be what you want to hear about this because you've watched the video about the Ouija board. You might be expecting some kind of horror story about a possession or an evil uh, devil coming in and uh, throwing things around, but that's not what happens with the Ouija board, okay? That's just scare stories because of the movies. And I think it was the movie called The Exorcist in the 70s that gave the Ouija board the bad name because before that they were doing it for hundreds of years. Like literally the Ouija board was just a natural thing. They would speak to the family and they would come through and then Hollywood came along, used fear as a, a money-making tactic and then lo and behold the, it gets a bad name and then all these scare stories start coming out. So you'll have spoke to a lot of people who've done the Ouija board and they'll have a scary story, okay? But what this is, it's just the mind playing tricks, you see? The mind just plays tricks. Uh, because you're expecting something bad to happen, uh, if you hear any little noises, you think something bad's happened. Then the mind goes into this negative spiral of negative, 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 and then eventually something happens and you all run away, okay? And this turns into a story and it gets over-exaggerated again and again and again until it becomes this story about how bad the Ouija board is and I wouldn't go near it ever again, okay? But... That's not the way it works, okay? Because I did this for two years in the group. Every time we went to a haunted location, which was every weekend, we did the Ouija board. And uh, to be honest, this was the only thing that was given any solid evidence of an afterlife, okay? Everything else wasn't enough evidence. Uh, we didn't see ghosts. We didn't, we didn't throw pebbles and the ghosts would throw it back like you see on the TV. That's, that's made up stuff. That's nonsense, okay? But the Ouija board did do one thing, it did communicate spirits and it did give us evidence. It would give us the name of the spirit, when the past, uh, what the past with and the name they were trying to get to, okay? So this is why I kind of took it upon myself at the time to actually leave that group and focus just on Ouija board communication and I did this for uh, around five years and I used to promote myself on Facebook and social media and I used to say anybody that wants to do this I'll do it with them okay so me and my friend used to travel uh, here and there doing it with people or on my own sometimes and we would always get this person's family through you see because I would always ask for the family and the family would come through and we got so much evidence that I started making these spiritual uh, experience forms okay we call them the Seth forms so every time we'd do it, we'd get them to fill out a form, uh, which would be uh, their name, address, uh, which spirit came through, what they communicated, and uh, the evidence they gave, okay? And they'd write all this down. At the, at the back of the form, there'd be a few ticky boxes, like, what was your experience? Was it out of one and five? And after this, do you believe the spirit world exists? And uh, every time we did it, they would always say yes, you see, because they get so much evidence and the people we were doing it with were often in tears because they couldn't believe that their family were literally spelling out their names in front of them and literally spelling out all this evidence that only they knew and uh, a lot of people used to say, well, is it them pushing it subconsciously? Because a lot of people think the Ouija board works with kind of a uh, I've forgotten the name of it now, but, but where you subconscious, subconsciously push it. But I, I knew about this, you see, and I tested this. I would get them to take the finger off. I would get people who didn't know anything about them to come on, put their hands on, and it would still spell this evidence. It would still give evidence for that person who were nowhere near the board, okay? Because I'm quite scientifically minded, and I would test all this stuff. And the more we did this, the more evidence we got from the Ouija board. And uh, I realized that this was the, the best method to communicate with the other dimensions. Now, I know nowadays people take DMT and they see the other dimensions, okay? Um, but 
what I'm working with here is I'm trying to find a physical method where it's kind of a fail-safe way of communicating with your family when they go to spirit. So I need a fail-safe way and that's what I'm going to work towards over the next few years uh, because uh, we need to try and figure out a way where we can speak to these entities anytime we want and we can get information from them to help us on the physical as well. I don't know how it kind of works. They might have some kind of fail-safes in place themselves so that it cannot be proven. But that's just a theory. I don't know. This is what I need to test, you see, because sometimes it might be detrimental to us to be able to speak to these entities. And I think it can only, they'll only come through for certain people. This is why some people say only certain people can see ghosts and others can't. But uh, I need to test this theory because in my experience, every time we did it, we would get the evidence, you see. Even if we were out somewhere in a coffee shop, I would literally scrunch up a piece of paper, put it on the table, and I would say, say to them, put your fingers on, and the spirits would still come through. It doesn't matter whether it's light or dark, what time of day it is. Um, those entities, their family, are with them all the time. I don't know whether they're seeing all this from a greater perspective or another dimension. I'm not sure how it works with that, with that plane of existence. But all I know is they would give the evidence, okay? And uh, some of our experiences with this as well, we would literally, uh, when I did this on my own or with a friend, we would get a lot of like ascended masters come through. Like we would get um, people like Jesus. Jesus came through a few times and we would get Isis from Egypt. Uh, the goddess Isis, she would come through. She would always speak in riddles and kind of symbols. She would always do like the spiral symbol. And she would do um, the all C and I. She would always draw the all C and I. And I don't know what this meant at the time. But afterwards I realised what the spiral symbol was. Because the spiral is actually the evolution ladder since the Big Bang, you see. Because as we evolve, as we expand our consciousness, uh, the our evolution comes back round. So we experience things again and again, but from a higher perspective. And that's how we spiritually evolve. And because uh, we see things more, you see, as we evolve, the all-C and I gets bigger and we see everything eventually. And that's what uh, being a fully enlightened being is, seeing everything that's possible within our time-space continuum. So, uh, so yeah, Isis used to come. And when Jesus came through, that was very interesting because Jesus actually told us that um, he didn't like the cross for one. The cross is not his symbol. He, he liked the fish. He said the fish is his symbol. He also said that religion has been very misled. He said it wasn't supposed to happen that way. He said he was just trying to promote love, okay? He said religion was created after him and it's all been misled. He said it wasn't meant to be like that, okay? And another thing he said was uh, his body was actually moved and it didn't rise from the dead, okay? He said his body was moved, it was part of a plan with his disciples and it was moved from where it was, I think it was in Bethlehem, to... And what he, I said, where was the body? And he said, Luxor. Okay, he said, it's in Luxor. So I don't know whether in the future we're going to find that body and uh, that's going to change religion forever, you see, because what we'll see is everything in the Bible was probably incorrect apart from Jesus' uh, teachings, you see. Those were very uh, important at the time and they're still important now because they promote love. And anything in this universe that promotes love is always at the forefront of everything, you see. So we don't have to believe the Bible, but as long as we believe in love, which the Bible teaches a lot of the time, then that's a good thing. Uh, but he did say religion in general was misled. All the churches, all the Christian religions, the Catholic religions are all misled. And a lot of them are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, that's what he said. Um, other than that, um, we did try another experiment where I actually... I said to the spirit world, I said, can somebody come through for somebody on Facebook? So uh, a woman came through, she said she needs to speak to uh, a girl on Facebook. I think it was something like Sarah Richardson or something, something similar or simple name like that. And uh, she gave her name, she gave what she passed with and how old she was when she passed. And then uh, what happened was I went on Facebook, I found this woman and I said on the board, I said, is this the woman you're trying to get through to? And the spirit said, yes. So I messaged this girl with all the details. I said, I know it sounds crazy, but we're doing this seance and uh, a spirit's come through and she said she knows you. She wants to give this message and she said, her name's this. I think it was Anne or something like that. She died at this year. She died from this and she said she was your grandmother. Something along those lines. And uh, 
And uh, this woman actually messaged back saying, yes, that's correct, that was my gran. Uh, how much more information did she give? And I said, that was it, I'm sorry. But, but yeah, all the information the spirit gave was correct. And we went on Facebook and we confirmed that with the person. So, so this method is a very, very good way of communicating with spirit. And it's a lot better than the average psychic medium, like the mental mediumship, because that's not as direct, you see. A mental mediumship will say, um, oh, I've got a grandfather figure for you here in spirit. He loves you very much, all this, this general things that's not enough evidence, you see. But with the Ouija board, it's very direct, and you can get the evidence that you need. So literally say the person's name, what the past with, when the past, uh, the person they're trying to contact's name, what was in the fridge that day. Like, this is how uh, exact the evidence can be with the Ouija board methods, okay? And when I say methods, I mean, you don't have to use a Ouija board, okay? You don't have to use that. You can use basically a flat surface. So if you imagine a flat surface, you can just put anything that slides on that surface and put your fingers on, and this way the, the spirits will actually come through and they'll literally handwrite things, okay? They don't have to go to letters and numbers, they'll literally handwrite what they're trying to say. And what's, in, what's impressive about this method is, which, uh, uh, which I used to do all the time, by the way, I didn't use the Ouija board itself very much, I used to always use this other method, because the spirits would come and handwrite, and um, the people I was doing it with actually recognised the handwriting, they actually recognised the handwriting from the spirit coming through, they could say, oh, oh that's my grandmother's handwriting, I recognise it. Uh, so not only do they get the proof what the spirit's saying, they get the proof of the handwriting, and uh, they were very overwhelmed, and a lot of the time they would burst out in tears uh, because they couldn't believe this was actually happening. Um, so yeah, so if anybody knows any scientists uh, who would like to work with us on this and try and figure out a way, a fail-safe way of communicating with these other dimensions physically in a Ouija board style method, uh, please let us know. And uh, give us your experiences on the Ouija board as well, because in my opinion, this is the very best way of communicating with spirit, okay? Uh, it's the most reliable way. Uh, the only problem is it's got a lot of fear attached to it because of Hollywood and because of money purposes. Uh, but what I would advise is just forget all that fear. It's not real, okay? It's not real. The Ouija board's not going to summon some attachment, as they put it, or a, a poltergeist which is just a movie thing, it's not going to happen because you have to think about it. The Ouija board itself is just two, two substances touching each other. So if I got like this, it's the same as this, it's the same as this touching this pen and sliding. That's all it is. There's nothing supernatural about it at all, but the spirit world can use your energy to communicate that way. I don't know how it works. We need to put more research into this, but it definitely works like this, guys. Uh, so yeah, give your experiences with the Ouija board in the comments as well. And um, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. And I'll see you on the next video. Please subscribe to my channel, Real Spirit Dynamics. And uh, I'll be putting more videos on soon because I'm actually going to make a live Ouija board session uh, and I'm going to do that live. I'm going to do a few of those in the future, so stay tuned for that, okay? See you guys next time. Thanks for listening.